Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to use perceptron rule to design XOR gate. This is the solved example number 3. The link for other examples is given in the description below. This is the two table for XOR gate. X1 and X2 are the two inputs and Y is the output. The output is low only when both the inputs are low or both of them are high in this case. The same thing can be represented as something like this. If both of them are low or high, the output is uh, 0. If either of them is uh, high, the output is uh, high in this case. If you want to classify this particular data with the help of uh, a linear line or you can say that a straight line, it is not possible. For example, if I draw a line over here, I am not able to classify this particular data properly. Similarly, if I draw a line over here, again I am not able to classify it. So this is one uh, peculiar uh, logical gate where the data is uh, non-linearly separable in this case. Hence, we cannot use a simple uh, perceptron rule to find or can say that uh, implement this XOR gate. Hence, uh, we will use this particular equation that is uh, y is equal to x1 negation of x2 plus negation of x1 x2. So this equation will give you this particular output over here. So what we do here is uh, starting from this particular equation, we will rewrite it something like this y is equal to z1 plus z2 where z1 is this particular part that's the first part and then z2 is equal to this part once you get z1 and z2 we will combine them and and then we will get uh, what you can say that the final y over here so first we need to solve this particular z1 and then z2 we need to combine them so that we will get this particular y over here so this is how the final uh, network will look like x1 and x2 are the two inputs Z1 and Z2 are the intermediary uh, perceptrons you can say and Y is the output over here and these are the weights in this case. So one time we need to solve this particular side, another time we need to solve this particular side and then we need to combine it we will get Y over here. So we will start with uh, Z1 is e Z1 equation. So Z1 is equal to X1 negation of X2 here. So if it is equal to 1 and if it is equal to 0 that is negation of 0 will become 1. So 1 and 1 is equal to 1 over here. So only in this particular equation, the output is 1. In all other cases, it is 0 here. This is the activation function. If the value of or the net input is uh, greater than some threshold value, the output is 1. Otherwise, it will be 0 here. So we need to calculate the net input here. If it is greater than threshold, it will be 1. Otherwise, it will be 0 in this case. So this is for Z1. And then we need to calculate it for Z2 at the later stage. Now uh, we need to initialize uh, some of the variables that is uh, weights here W11 and W21. Uh, I have initialized it to 1. You can initialize it to anything. It is not hard and fast rule that we have to start with 1. We need to randomly initialize these particular weights here. Similarly, we need to initialize two more variables. Uh, the first one is uh, threshold. You have to set some threshold value because we are going to compare this uh, net input with the help of uh, threshold here. So we need to initialize it. Randomly, I have set it to 1 in this case. Similarly, we have to set the value of learning rate. Uh, for this particular example, I have considered 1.5. You can consider anything again here. Now I will start with the first input that is this one 00. zero. The net input that is Z1 in is equal to WIJ X1. So WIJ is uh, W11 in the first case. Second case, uh, it will be W21. XI is X1. Second case, it will be X2. So this one is 1 here. So 1 into 0, that is the first part. And this 1 into 0 is the second part over here. We will get 0 as the net input. So this net input is uh, the th uh, theta is 1 here. So net input 0 is not greater than 1. So because it is not greater than 1, output will be 0 here. And expected is also 0 here. No issues in this particular case. Now I will start with the second input, that is 0, 1. Again, I will put in this particular equation, I got the value as 1 as the net input. This net input is greater than or equivalent to 1 in this case. So because of that output is equivalent to 1. But the expected answer or the target answer is 0 here. Because they are not same, we have to update this particular weights. To update that particular weights, we have to use this particular equation. Wij is equal to Wij, that's a old weight, plus learning rate into t minus o, that is target minus uh, calculated output into input here. So W11 is equal to W11, that's the previous weight was 1, that is what I have written here. Learning rate is 1.5. T minus O. T is what? Target. That is 0. Calculated output is 1 here. So 0 minus 1 multiplied by Xi. Xi is what in this case? 
uh, that's first case x1 is uh, this one second case it will be one here so uh, if i solve this particular equation i will get zero as the answer here now coming back to w21 that's the second weight this one is uh, one here previously it was one so i have written one here 1.5 is the learning rate 0 minus 1 is the target minus calculated output and input what is the input now this is one here so if i solve this one 1 plus 1.5 into minus uh, 1 so that will become 1 minus uh, 1.5 so it will become minus 0.5 over here. So W11 is uh, uh, 1 only, but W21 has been changed to minus 0.5. Now I will start with the first input here. This is the first input. Uh, and then I will calculate the Z1 in. Z1 in is equal to same equation here, Wijxi. If I solve this particular thing, I, I got 0 as the net input. Because net input is uh, not greater than the threshold. That is, it should be greater than 1. Uh, because it is not greater we got zero here and expected is zero no issues i will start with the second input if i put all the values in this particular equation i got minus 0.5 this minus 0.5 again it is not greater than one because of that i got output as zero again uh, it, it is similar to your target so there is no need to do the weight updation i will consider one zero uh, and then uh, if i put all those things in this equation i got one as the z input or a z in now this uh, net input is uh, greater than or equivalent to one so one is greater than or equivalent to one so the output in this case is one and what is expected here the same thing is expected i will continue with the next input that is one one if i put everything in this equation i will get 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 is not greater than one because it is not greater than one output is zero here so you can say that all these particular examples were correctly classified with the help of uh, this particular weights that is w11 is 1 w21 is minus 0 0.5 threshold is 1 learning rate is equal to 1.5 in this case now we will continue with the next function that is uh, z2 which is equal to x1 bar x2 or negation of x1 x2 in this case the two table for this one is shown over here if the first one that is uh, x1 bar if it is equal to 0 the negation of this will become 1 and x2 is 1 in this particular case z2 will become high in all other cases it will become 0 here so that is being shown over here the activation function will remain same we need to find the optimal weights for this one as well as the threshold and the learning rate for this particular part of the network in this case now I will continue with initializing the weights that is W12 and W22 were initialized to 1. Again you can set any values, randomly we need to initialize here. Threshold is set to 1 here and the learning rate is set to 1.5 over here. Same values I have taken. I will continue with the first input that is 00. I need to calculate Z2 in that is nothing but Wij Xi. If I put this particular values that is W12 and then W22 as well as this input I will get 0 as the Z2 in. Because 0 is not greater than the threshold value that is 1, 0 is not greater than 1, I will get output as 0 here and the same thing is expected. Now I will continue with the second input. Second input is 0, 1. So if I put all those values in this equation, I got Z2 in as 1 and because Z2 in is greater than 1 here, Z2 in is greater than equal to 1 you can say the output is 1 this output and the target is matching again no issues now i will go with this particular third one that is one zero if you look at this particular one zero we got the z2 in is one one is greater than equal to one output is one here but what is expected the expected answer is zero here so what i need to do is i need to use this particular weight updation equation and then we need to modify these weights here so wij is equal to wij n into t minus o xi Wij is known to us that is the old weight, n is the learning rate, t is the target, o is the actual output calculated and then xi is the input here. So put those particular things in the equations like uh, w12 is equal to 1, learning rate is 1.5, target is uh, 0 but calculated is 1 here, so 0 minus 1 into 1 here because this first one is 1 here. Uh, it will become, if I solve it, it will become minus uh, 0.5 second time this will become zero and the answer will be one in this case so we got the updated weights that is the first one is minus 0 0.5 and second one is one here now we will put these particular inputs again if i put this particular zero zero i got z2 in is equal to zero which is uh, not greater than equal to one here so the output is zero here that's perfectly fine and that is what is expected when i continue with zero one 
zero one uh, if I solve it I got z two in as one one is greater than equal to one because of that I got one here one is the output and the target is also one here similarly next time I got to minus point five output is zero expected is zero here last one is point five again point five is not greater than uh, one here so output is zero and expected is also zero here so with respect to, to these weights I am able to classify that particular data correctly in this case also now I will continue with the next one that is y is equal to z1 or z2 z1 is known to us z2 is known to us if you go back and see this particular thing z2 is equal to 0 1 0 0 z1 is 0 0 1 0 that is what we have already calculated so z1 I have written here and then z2 I have written here y is what y is or between z1 and z2 that is uh, this one is 0 this one is 1 this one is 1 and this one is 0 here because uh, or will be high uh, we can say that uh, if any one of those particular input is high in this case both are low in this case also both are low so we have to consider this particular input and then we need to find out the value of v1 and v2 here these are the inputs and these are the and this is the output and if you look at this one with respect to x1 and x2 we are expecting the same thing here if these two things are there we are expecting one over here now uh, again we will initialize these two weights that is v1 and v2 to one here threshold is 1 learning rate is equal to 1.5 I will start with the first input I got a v1 in as or you can say y in actually y in is equal to 0 0 is not greater than threshold that is 1 so the output is 0 expected is also 0 here continue with the second one I got uh, y in as 1 1 is greater than equal to 1 so the output is 1 target is also 1 here coming back to the next one the next one that is 1 0 you can see here this is 1 0 I got uh, the y in as 1 because it is greater than equal to 1 output is 1 the expected is also 1 here now again one more input is there that is 0 0 don't consider this one because we are talking about z1 and z2 here this 0 0 0 0 uh, because we have 0 0 y in is 0 0 is not greater than equal to 0 so the output is 0 here which is as expected now with respect to v1 and v2 that is if both the values are 1 we were able to classify this particular data successfully so that is uh, the final weights for v1 and v2 for this particular uh, threshold and learning rate so finally we got uh, w11 as 1 w21 as minus 0.5 w12 as minus 0.5 w22 as 1 v1 and v2 as 1 in this case so put all these particular values in this particular diagram you will get the final uh, a perceptron rule for XOR gate in this case. So in this video I have explained how can we use a perceptron rule to design XOR gate. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.